Uh, thank you very much for staying so long. So yeah, I'm going to talk a bit about Postgres. Um, migration may or may not be a problem for you, but um, I present you here something which we believe is um, quite new, quite innovative in the way we can handle downtime. And yeah, so uh, very shortly, yeah, I'm working since three years now at Orderbird in Berlin, and uh, we're doing some pretty nice stuff for restaurants and bars with live things. So I have quite a fuzzy stack. And actually, I'm also like uh, one of the core maintainer and since recently also an owner of Mongo Engine. So strange for a guy doing so much Mongo to present something about Postgres, but um, it's possible to use both. And yeah, maybe we will see that actually using other database technology can help you also to bring new concepts to Postgres. Um, maybe to start, um, who here is using Postgres in production? Okay. Who is making migrations? Okay, the other one you are lying. And um, who already had problems with migration or has problems with downtime sometimes? No? Okay. Nice. nice. Maybe, maybe we'll find something. So, okay, basically there are two main cases with migration. So we can have something quite simple. You may yeah, extend, add new table, new column, alter it, and generally it's the kind of stuff Postgres is quite good at. It's going out quite fast. You don't have big problem, very small downtime, hot migration sometimes. There are actually some possibilities also to combine uh, basically um, two versions of code and to combine actually to make migration serialized, like one week deploying something, the next one de rolling back what you made, etc. But here's something quite different because there are still some cases uh, which the guys who raised the hand lastly know about, where you have really a very different business logic. You may have also like a strategical change in the company or so, which requires a huge migration, which unfortunately needs a lot of also data handling and needs several, eventually several dozens of minutes of downtime, kind of stuff nobody really likes to do. And yeah, no, even more if you have some non-tech oriented company. Um, for this, we're going to use Postgres 9.4, and strictly 9.4. 9.5 will bring also some other things. Um, who knows here about, about logical decoding? Okay. Um, yeah, it's unfortunately not so known, but it's actually really great. Um, basically, logical decoding is the level of replication. Maybe one last question. Who is using replication? in Postgres, the one from Postgres, not from extra provider, extra drivers. Okay, not so many people. Um, basically, when you're using replication, there are some write-ahead logs, which is the system of Postgres to make the replication work. And you have different level of replication, some hot standby, these kind of things maybe you've already heard about. Um, this logical decoding is basically a next level, which was introduced in 9.4 which allows basically to describe what is happening on a database while doing the replication in a logical way, as it says, meaning precisely here's an insert, here's an update, rather than having some blobs and diffs. So this allows quite a bit of stuff because basically you can extend it with output plugins. And um, what is also very nice in Postgres is replication slots. Um, other database just do replication and you are speaking to other database which handle replication, maybe with some parameters on their side, but on Postgres you can have really slots, which means different slaves and so can read from different slots, which you can start at different time, which can have different levels and different outputs. So you can do a lot of stuff. Now you are all a bit lost, but slowly it will start to, to, to form uh, and to make some sense, I hope. Um, yeah, basically this is what is possible. Our toolbox, we're going to use a wall to json which is a great tool which was not written by Ethan Snyder Fry. This is the fork which we are using because there is some help for the compilation. It's something which was proposed to go inside the, inside the core of 9.4. Unfortunately, it didn't make it. It's actually really great. Wall, as I said, is the write ahead logs, so this internal uh, Postgres replication language. And if you expose it to json, you understand that you can do some stuff with it. PG Migrator is a toolbox or yeah, a kind of module we, we, we built, purely Python and Psycho PG2. So this is why we're here. And which allows to do some fancy stuff. There are two main modules, basically. 
which one is switching from a traditional physical replicating slave to a logical replicating second master, because basically when you start to do this logical slave, this logical replication, you are not anymore, or you can choose not to be anymore in a master slave, but when you have two master, and here will come the trick that we will see later. Still replicating, but two masters. And um, JSON receiver, which basically allows to pass JSON, as you can read, and apply some transformation. So what we're gonna do to uh, have a migration, which for whatever side will at the end just cost a very few seconds of downtime is the following. We start with the classical replication, we switch to logical replication, we pause it. Then on the new switched second database, former slave, which is now a master, replicating logically, we apply the migration locally there. Then we replay the migration, so we paused it. We replay what we missed in the time, transforming data on the fly. Then we deploy the application, so the Python application, the backend side, and we write directly to the new master. This is the concept. I hope you follow a bit. There are gonna be some graphs and then a live demo. So this is starting point. I guess this is fine. Then the second part, as I said, yeah, we change a bit the way basically both communicate. The second master, the old, the, uh, yeah, the old slave becomes a new master. Run the migration there. Then we enable basically wall to JSON. I didn't precise this is actually a C plugin, writing directly or communicating directly with Postgres. Um, we, we replay that. We go through our toolbox, which is PG Migrator, which updates what needs to be updated, adds, transform, delete, remove, filter, everything is possible, and write what we want to be written in the new database that has the new schema. And basically, when you are at that time, and you have your data which is transferred, your old backend, your old logic which is transferred there, but which still arrives there, you make a small downtime, switch, you can have blue-green deployment, even more, but the easy case is you make a downtime, you switch, you have your new code base which writes directly to the new master. The old one, you can do whatever you want with it. Actually, if you're in production, you won't have just two databases, but you will have three or four. You can serialize replication in Postgres very easily so that the new master directly has a slave because, yes, security matters, as we all know. Um, yeah, I guess I'll continue directly with the live demo, except there is some very urgent question, and else we have a slightly longer live, um, yeah, question Q&A session. Okay. There are a couple tasks. Uh, who knows me know that I like this. Uh, I tried to make it somehow visible to play a bit with the colors. We are on the first on the left. It has a blue color. Blue is when I'm talking to master. So basically here I'm on Vagrant and I have two Docker containers for master and slave. They start as master and slave, then they switch, but just for keeping it easy. The green one is the slave, uh, yeah, as usual, and the two last are gonna be for some uh, yeah, fun and tests. All right, so um, here we're gonna run master, okay? It starts database, this is some classical output. I could also have less tabs, but here we can have the output, the database, this is quite nice. Here we can start the slave. Ah, interesting. Uh -huh. Pulling repos. Fantastic. Oops. Um. Sorry, which one? Okay, but I, I don't have, okay. I have a root, right, okay. But I don't think I will, uh, so wait, actually this is very strange because. Am I missing something? 
Okay, I'm gonna. Did I miss something? I, let me just retry this way, basically. Okay, whatever. Excuse me. I had, yeah, it was my mistake. I had deleted indeed the tests before and and forget the most important part. Excuse me. Um, right. Here we continue, so we can see that these are the kind of so the wall, the right ahead log, which is the kind of thing for the replication. Um, okay, um, this is basically the setup. We can see on no, oh, there is no log on the master. Sorry. Um, here we're gonna yeah just log basically to the so have small bash on it. All right, so we can do some fancy thing like taking passwords. What do we have here? I have a small bit of bow table, have another one. All right. Um, here we can basically check um, how is insane pain. Nice name, no? You like it for uh, basically our our slave. It's not really a slave, so we need some random name because uh, you never know about the state. Actually, um, we can do the same thing here. Ah, excuse me, I added to uh, prevent some disruption to change the board. Um, yeah, and also so that you believe me that I'm not cheating and have the same thing in the back. All right, so as you see, uh, yeah, I don't want to show replication. Replication works, and you may know about it. Um, just to make it even more uh, obvious, we can do something like this. Okay. Oh, it's gone. And what about the slave? Oh, it's gone. Okay, but uh, that's quite trivial. Um, now we can do something else where basically we're going to insert something to the database. Um, let me, oops, sorry, excuse me. Still not used to how to move here between the whatever. Okay. hate to go through these windows. All right, um, just fire this first. So yeah, I don't think I need to explain what it is, but uh, what it's doing is basically um, creating table data and inserting some value after a small sleep, so nothing extremely fancy until now. Um, yeah, we can check that again. We can also do some This should be this, all right. No, also here. Okay, 63. Okay, you see this is growing. So um, again, this is uh, quite trivial, but um, now it's, this is basically a case where this tab is basically your customers which are still putting new stuff and you want in parallel basically um, to do your deployment to start your migration. So you're gonna use now the tools we're working with, so we're in PG Migrator. We'll use this uh, first component, so yeah, Python and Psycho PG, to switch, uh, basically it's not this one, which I wanted to do. Excuse me, I'll start to be. Wait. I know. I see so bad from here. I should have made the replication of the screens. Um, all right, excuse me. Um, so we have, we can define here some source database, source user definitely, source password, etc. And uh, we can define some slot for the testing. That, let me, yeah, so we could, ah, you lost again. Ah. Excuse me. Uh, yeah, three, it sounds reasonable. Sync test three. Okay, we created a slot. The slave is in a good state. We use the trigger file. So this is a classical way in uh, Postgres when you have replication to use a trigger file to make the slave become a master. Um, this is also in case you want to have some fallback strategies, you're going to use that. Um, so now we have a master and we are eating the changes basically, which are what we want. 
Okay, so um, now basically, I'm gonna go back to the shell here. Um, this is the slave shell, it's maybe not very obvious before. So this is the master slave, the master, excuse me, the master shell. The master shell is still eating data, and the slave is, is stalled, it is planned, because it became a master, so we don't have exactly the same replication. So now basically what we want to do is to do some fancy, fancy things, which is basically our migration. So for example, we're gonna alter the table and add a new column. And eventually, we can also run, so this is the schema migration, and we can do some update, where we're gonna basically set yeah, some new info, and we're gonna take the old info, and yeah, add new, it's just for um, seeing how it works. Logically, 224 rows updated. This sounds quite good. And now we can um, go to the next step, where we're gonna, I'm gonna paste it, because it's gonna be too long, and I'm not able to see so well. We can continue here. Um, and the slot, yeah, okay. And we take the third slot. Uh, all the rest should be fine. Boom, so this is JSON receiver. Basically now we are still in the state we are not replicating directly from Postgres. We have updated the migration, but the new master is doing nothing. So now we're gonna start the JSON receiver, which basically will eat up what we want to eat, which was basically in the slot. It was quite fast for a while because basically it went back all what we were missing, it replayed what we were missing, and now it's going slowly, because like on the fly, as you can see, it's adding info and new info with the values. But what is done here, actually, is what is done here. Uh, so we can see now the max ID, which goes up, because it's the max ID from here. So basically now, live, we have two masters, and the second one is working, you could already write some other data, if you really want to have like two systems writing in parallel to things also synchronizing, you can try. Uh, can be tough, but you can try. Um, but basically what you will do at that time is uh, the moment where you really switch your, uh, you, you make even to the sm small downtime to be sure that there are no parallel writes, to be really sure, and you switch your system, you switch the code behind. So um, basically now we can actually kill that. We saw that this works. We can make sure that here 623 and on the old master also 623. And um, on the slave we can also do, oops, it's on the new master, which is this green one. We can also check if there is someone which has like where new info was null and there is zero. <coughs> It's quite uh, good news. Just the new code base writes directly to this new database. That's the new master. It worked. Um, and now, um, oops. This is done. Um, yeah, just some words about the future. So for sure we'd like to develop and open source a bit the, 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 the package. Um, the last time we had a bit less time to develop it, so we implemented, but really on a beta or alpha uh, version style, some components for yeah, adding a column, for doing the update, etc. But it would need a lot of more details for really co more complex stuff. It would need some serious testing, some serious documentation, these kind of things. Um, but later, um, we could integrate it with Python frameworks, and eventually, so like if there is interest for that, and uh, we see a community willing to work on this, I guess it's possible to have a Django package, which would just basically check at the migration file and automatically create the transform object to allow to have that for a very cheap developer cost. That was it, and I would like to thank uh, Ethan Snyder Frey, who is a colleague, not here today, but who worked a lot also on that project. And uh, now it's time for questions, I guess. Thanks for a great talk.
Um, be able to show the code that does the transformation? Sure. Had also kind of prepared that. Uh, okay, wrong screen. One more second. Yeah, so uh, this is basically the structure. You see the test is uh, about that. Uh, um, so this is basically, so there, there are two main components. Um, the migrator basically, uh, for now is implemented, we have a class, like a transformer class, which register. So against the one or the other operation, and uh, which defines basically how you do the transform value. Um, so this is like yeah, the, the base class for it, and you will, for example, um, here, so I still cannot see very well, but this is basically the way you will have to add new data, which you could do this way. You can yeah, basically filter out all foods, delete some stuff. Uh, and yeah, this is like a very simple main. As I said, it's really alpha, it was for prototyping. Uh, but basically, you have transformer, you register, whatever you want. And you have some, yeah, the receiver, it connects directly to uh, the, the, um, the output plugin and uh, yeah, writes new JSON, which is then taken on the other side. Is it okay or will you, okay? Yeah, some more questions. Uh, I'll be happy. Uh, thanks for the talk. Uh, very good. Um, did you test uh, the solution for more advanced uh, uh, structure like uh, HStore or full text search? Fields? So, I mean, full text search, I don't think anything can go wrong, but uh, HStore must be more complicated. I guess the, the problem will be basically to write the, the transformer here, but since this is a quite flexible structure, I guess everything is possible, but I didn't test, so uh, I can't promise definitely. But JSON, HStore, having a list, then I, I guess it sounds doable. Um, a possible setup for a um, hot standby of, of, of uh, Postgres uh, could be implemented using a similar way? Um, so hot standby is a level of replication and the logical re replication is basically the level higher. So the logical replication um, decoding, I, I, I will also put the, the, the presentation on, yeah, on, on also on the EuroPython site and I will, I, will, I will publish it and I will add also some links to documents. Um, but basically, the, this is just the levels of replication. And when we do this logical replication, you have included the full hot standby. It's just something on top. You lose nothing. It's, you, yeah, there's one step and you can bring it further. Thanks for a great talk. Um, I'm not quite understood. Uh, do you know, uh, when do you know that you can switch your application? When do you know the replay is done? This is basically something which for now is not automated. Um, I don't know if it's completely automatable. Basically you could um, listen on what is written on the master and check the moment where nothing more is written. So it depends which kind of fade out you have. Um, you could also use some kind of caching mechanism for the new one if you have a blue-green uh, deployment system. You could even do really hot switch. Like uh, the main problem there is actually the sequences. There is actually, except the sequences, there is nothing which is prevents you really completely of making a complete hot switch. But with sequences, you would have to trick a little bit by resetting them on the slave to allow a space which is high enough for what you expect to come in from the master. It's doable, but uh, yeah, it's quite kind of tricky. Um, else, basically, you would shut down your, your, your data input, and if you have a system that you monitor well enough, that you know well enough, you know then when is the right point to start right on the new master. 
the only problem could be the some 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 clash between the sequences and this is why you should make sure that nothing else needs to be written afterwards on the old master that's basically it if you want to have it for moderate cost hi um, is this possible to have the interplay between two different database systems? I mean, here you synchronize Postgres with Postgres, but is it possible to think about synchronizing Postgres with something else, like, I don't know, MySQL or whatever? Uh, uh, MySQL, don't ask me, I'm sorry, but uh, with Mongo, for example, if, it's, uh, if you have JSON afterward, um, it's, I, I, I think it's quite obvious that you can do it. Uh, it's basically completely out of scope for that, nothing to do with uh, my, the migration itself. But uh, since you can have, you have this flexibility with the replication slots and with the re replication flows and even output possibilities, you can definitely use something slightly similar to that to indeed um, write some output to some, like for example, if we take JSON to some NoSQL Mongo database, I guess this is, I didn't try it, but it must be interesting and I'm quite sure it's possible. Even more like, for example, in Mongo, you generally have documents which are more complex and contain data from several tables. You can have some like intelligent listener over several tables to aggregate and write nicely prepend output, even transformed on the fly. Also but possible. Then I have a follow-up question. Have you looked into Symmetric DS? No. No, it's, uh, I, I don't know about that. So I, 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 um, I have to admit that there are a lot of other possibilities to replication, master-master schemes in Postgres and so. We wanted basically, so we were a bit afraid by all these tools which all claim to be the best also and are like half sponsored and supported by Postgres. So we wanted to work actually with really the internals of Postgres, checking also a bit what are the next upcoming developments and yeah, build our system on top of that. There might be, for other purpose, other or better or different solution. Any more questions? No? Okay, so um, 